Nate is getting down towards the end of his project. It'll be a relief. It's been, it's been a pretty serious undertaking, and it's gone pretty well. So he's putting in the driveway, the apron, the approach between the public roadway in the front of a storage project and coming onto the site. The plans, approved by the Arizona Department of Transportation, called for eight inches of concrete. That's great. That's, I mean, that's pretty stout. The intriguing thing to me was that it did not call for any rebar, which thing I do not understand at all. But Nate decided to put some in anyway, because it's never the wrong thing to exceed a requirement. You know, it's never the wrong thing to do it right, because if you do it right, you're never sorry. And that's, you know, it's good policy, because who wants to be sorry, right? So the first thing in putting this driveway in is to remove the material that's in the way in order to get down to the level where you can come back with the five inches of crushed rock that's specified, then the eight inches of concrete, and end up at the grade that it needs to be at for the water to run out uniformly and the cars to approach smoothly and for the thing to work. Now one note is that this is going in very close to the very end of the project. The reason for that is because if you've been watching the content we've put out there about this little adventure that Nate's undertaken, you'll know that there have been thousands of tons of block and concrete and crushed asphalt and dirt and gravel and all sorts of things. Truckload after truckload after truckload after truckload now for months. And if this driveway would have been put in first, it would have taken all the wear and tear and abuse of moving those thousands of tons of material in and out. But as it is going in at the last, essentially the only wear and tear this driveway is going to take is the wear and tear that is imposed by the paying customers. It's going to be in good shape when this is opened here in a couple of months, and it'll remain in good shape because the wheel traffic will be much lighter than the construction traffic. And that's a good rule of thumb. If you've got a project... Try to leave the driveway out, the concrete in the driveway. Save it for the end if you can so that it looks good when the job is done. When it comes to dirt work and excavation, there's really only a couple of things that have to happen. The dirt has to be broken up or softened, and then it has to be moved or put in place. And different machines specialize or are able to accomplish those two tasks with different degrees of efficiency. Think of it like a pick and a shovel. you got to dig a hole, and the dirt's hard, and so you take the pick and you break it up. And then once it's broken up, you take the shovel and move it. Well, the same is true with heavy equipment. If you see a tooth on uh, part of that machine, like on a backhoe or an excavator bucket, or in this case, on the rippers on the back of this little John Deere tractor in the Gannon box, those rippers, those teeth, are for breaking up the compacted material. And the blades or the buckets or the, you know, the dozers are for moving or carrying the loosened material and putting it in place. Now a blade, like the back of this Gannon, can scrape the material down slowly if it's hard, but that's not efficient. And so that's one of the things that really sets a Gannon box apart in the broad general category of small earth moving equipment, is that it can roll those rippers down, tear the subgrade apart, and then scrape it, almost pick it up and carry it wherever you need it, and then put it in to a very close tolerance. So the Gannon box on the back of this thing is a really versatile tool when it's being run by an operator who knows how to take advantage of its capacity. Look at the way he can move dirt forwards or backwards, coming or going. That's just like a, a concrete finisher who can trowel or float forehand or backhand. It gets a lot of work done when every move is moving the material efficiently.
running equipment is fun, or at least it's fun while you're learning. As with everything else, once you've mastered it, the element of fun sort of diminishes and the element of endurance becomes more important. But when you're learning how to do this, it's, it's sort of a real life video game without a reset button. And it's just a darn good idea if you've got excavation that needs to happen and you have a budget and you have a timeline and it just, you can't, you just can't afford any sort of a big disappointment, hire a pro. Even if you rent the equipment, hire a pro to put in the seat of that thing. There are exceptions. You might be able to operate equipment. You might have enough flexibility in your schedule that you can get out there and play around and do it. But on a job like this, where there's only three days that the Department of Transportation will allow the cones to be set to restrict the traffic on the main drag, there is no time for an amateur. This is time for somebody who really knows how to get it done. And it has to be done with the right equipment. The right equipment in excavation is always determined by considering the compromise between power and mobility that is ideal for the job. A bigger machine with more power moves more dirt faster. A smaller machine with more controllability and agility and maneuverability gets into tight spaces, does less damage, and put, takes the material out and puts the material back more accurately. So it is important, as with, I guess, most projects in construction, to have the right tool for the job. Mitchell is the contractor Nate used throughout this project for excavation. He's a good guy. He's honest. He's a pro. He doesn't waste any moves. And he's got the right equipment for this. It's a rented excavator, just a little bitty guy that can sneak along the edges and pull out that asphalt and take the grade down to where Mitchell can cut down to a, a, a pretty well located elevation with his John Deere. The rocks can be sorted out and it's, it's nice to have an excavator around for what used to be nothing but handwork or tedious sorting with a bucket. But you've just got to have a wheel tractor of some kind with a bucket on the front and a Gannon box on the back if you're lucky in order to get a little project like this in and the fine grade established within maybe half a tenth, which is pretty much the accuracy that Mitchell gets. There's one other aspect to this that you may have sort of picked up on, and that is it's nerve-wracking to be working within 10 feet of traffic, a lot of traffic, going by at 45 miles an hour. That's why we're supposed to slow down in work zones. That's why traffic fines increase in work zones, because the men and women who operate this equipment when they're working in the public right-of-way are in one of the most dangerous positions in the whole broad general category of construction. Working in close proximity to moving cars is a dangerous game. But the cones are in place and we're wearing reflective vests and keeping our eyes open and keeping our fingers crossed. And as it turned out, no harm, no foul. But moment by moment, it's easy to keep looking over your shoulder.
in Oregon, this material, this gravel that's going in underneath the concrete would be called one inch minus. In Arizona, it's called ABC or AB, aggregate base course or aggregate base. But it's the same stuff. It's rocks and the dust and the little bitty pieces from the crushing process that will fall through a one inch screen. And boy, does it lock up tight. You put a little water with it and you mix it up just a little bit and put it in place and roll it in and it just gets really, really hard. And it sort of provides a buffer between your concrete and whatever the subgrade does if it moves around a little bit or if it absorbs the moisture out of the pore at a different rate. It also increases the distance that the load is being, over which the load is being dispersed so that the point loads on the concrete are spread out over a larger area of the subgrade in order to have more of the subgrade supporting those point loads, if that makes any sense at all. So anyhow, ABC, aggregate base course, is what's going in here. And it's important that it's put in accurately because if it's, if too much is put in, then your concrete's too thin. And if too little is put in, then your concrete is too thick. And if your concrete is too thick, it costs you about 105 bucks a yard for the additional concrete. And who wants to pay that? doesn't take long for that to, to turn into real money. So getting this ABC in place, right degree of moisture, rolled into the right degree of hardness is something that just absolutely has to be done right if you're not going to have a lot of problems in the future. <laughs>